write down 6,324 correct to the nearest thousand. So the answer will be 6,000. Write the following numbers in order size. Start with the smallest number. Okay, so the smallest number is minus 6, then minus 5, then 0, then 6, and then 12. Write the following numbers in order of size. Start with the smallest number. So the smallest number is 0 0.0. 7, 8, and then we have 0 0.708, and then we have 0 0.78, and then we have 0 0.87. Question 3. Write 20% as a fraction. So 20% can be written as, as a fraction, 2 over 10, right? And we can simplify this further by dividing the numerator and the denominator by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Question 4. Here is a list of four fractions. 4 over 16, 2 over 8, 15 over 60, 3 over 9. One of these fractions is not equivalent to 1 over 4. Write this fraction down. So the answer is 3 over 9. Because the first four fractions, sorry, the first three fractions all produce, when you simplify them further, 1 over 4. So for example, if I divide the numerator by 4 and divide the denominator by 4, it produces uh, 1 over 4. Second one, Divide this by divide the numerator by two, divide the denominator by two, which is one over four. And third fraction, divide the numerator by fifteen, which is one, and divide the denominator by fifteen, which is four. So the only fraction which is not equivalent to one over four is three over nine. Question five: Write down the first even multiple of seven. So the answer is 14. Simplify 3 times 4t. So we're going to multiply 3 times 4t, which is 12t. 6b, simplify 8a minus 3a plus 2a. So first of all, we're going to subtract 8a minus 3a, which gives us 5a. And then you're going to add 2a, which is... 7a. So our final answer is 7a. Question 7. Here is a probability scale. It shows the probability of each of the events a, b, c and d. 7a. Write down the letter of the event that is certain. So that is d. 7b. Write down the letter of the event that is unlikely. B. There are 12 counters in a bag. Three of the counters are red. One of the counters is blue. Two of the counters are yellow. The rest of the counters are green. Caitlin takes at random a counter from the bag. C. Show that the probability that this counter is yellow or green is 2 over 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to write down the probabilities of red, blue and yellow. So let me write that down. So the probability of taking a red counter is 3 over 12. Probability of taking a blue counter is 1 over 12. Probability of taking a yellow counter is 2 over 12. And the probability of taking a green counter, it's 6 over 12. Now it says, show that the probability of selecting a yellow or green counter is 2 over 3. So what we need to do 
is we need to add the fractions of the probability of yellow and green together. So 2 over 12 plus 6 over 12 equals 8 over 12. We can simplify this by dividing the numerator and denominator by 4. So 8 divided by 4 is 2 and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that's our answer. Question 8. 3 kilograms of meat cost 54 pounds. Nina buys 2 kilograms of the meat. Work out how much Nina pays. So we know that 3 kilograms of meat cost 54 pounds. How much does 1 kilogram cost? And the way you can find that out is by dividing 54 divided by 3. So 1 kilogram oops, is equal to 18 pounds. We want another cost of 2 kilograms, so we need to multiply 18 times 2 to give us the total cost. So 18 pounds times it by 2, so 16, 2 times 1 is 2, so it will cost Nina 36 pounds. So it would cost Nina 36 pounds to buy meat that weighs 2 kilograms. Question 9. The center of this circle is marked with a cross X. 9a. Write down the mathematical name of the straight line shown in the circle. This is known as a radius. Nine B. Write down the mathematical name of the straight line that is touching the circle. This is known as a tangent. Question 10. Tim and three friends go on holiday together for a week. The four friends will share the cost of the holiday equally. Here are the cost of the holiday. £1,280 for four return plane tickets. £640 for a villa. £220 for hire of a car for the week. Work out how much Tim has to pay for his share of the cost. So the first thing I'm going to do is add up the total cost. So we have £1,280 plus £164 Plus, a, sorry, two hundred and twenty pounds. Add them together. Zero fourteen eleven two. So the total cost is two thousand one hundred and forty pounds. I'm then going to divide the total cost by 4. So 4 divided by 2140. So 0, 5, carry the 1, 3, 2, 5. So Tim needs to pay. 500 pounds, sorry, 535 pounds. So he needs to pay 535 pounds. Question 11. Write down an example to show that each of the following two statements is incorrect. A. The factors 
of an even number are always even. So let's write down the factors of 28. Factors of 28 include 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, and 28. Okay, so 7 is a, it's not an even number, so it's it dispels this statement over here. 11b, all the digits in odd numbers are odd. So, suppose I had 235. This is an odd number, however the 2 is an even number, so it dis dispels this um, scenario. Question 12. A shop sells desktop computers, laptops and tablets. The composite bar chart shows information about sales over the last three years. 12a. Write down the number of desktop computers sold in 2015. So that is 100. 12b. Work out the total number of laptops sold in the three years. So, year one, the total laptop sold is 160. Year two, the total laptop sold was 220. Year three, total laptop sold was 280. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna add them together. 160 plus 220 plus 280, which gives us 660. So the total number of laptops sold in the three years is 660. 12C, state the item that had the greatest increase in sale over the three years. Give a reason for your answer. Well, it's tablet. And the reason why is the first year, It sold 60 units. Year two, it sold 160 units. And year three, it sold 360 units. Question 13. A piece of wire is 240 centimeters long. Peter cuts two 45 centimeters length off the wire. He then cuts the rest of the wire into as many 40 centimeters length as possible. Work out how many 40 centimeters lengths of wire Peter cuts. So what Peter does first is he cuts off two 45 centimeters length off the wire. So I need to subtract that from the 240 centimeters long. So 240 minus 45 and then minus 45 again which which is 150 centimeters long right it says he then cuts the rest of the wire into as many 40 centimeters length as possible so what we're going to be doing is we're going to divide 150 by 40 so 40 Divide it by 150 centimeters. Okay, so zero, zero. Carry that over there. So how many times does 40 go into 150? Three times. Remainder, 30. So Peter has three pieces that have the length of 40 centimeters.
So that's the final answer. Question 14. Gavin, Harry and Isabella each earn the same monthly salary. Each month, Gavin saves 28% of his salary and spends the rest of his salary. Harry spends three quarters of his salary and saves the rest of his salary. The amount of salary Isabella saves to the amount of salary she spends equals three to seven. Work out who saves the most of their salary each month. You must show how you get your answer. So we know that Gavin saves 28% of his salary. So let's write that down. Gavin, 28% of his salary saves it down. And we also know that Harry spends three quarters of his salary and saves one quarter of his salary. So Harry, one quarter of his salary. I'm going to convert that into a percentage, which equals to 25%. Now, the amount of salary Isabella saves to the amount of salary she spends is equal to three to seven. What we need to do first is add the total parts together. So three plus seven is 10, okay? However, it says the amount of salary Isabella saves. So three out of 10 is the amount of uh, money Isabella saves. So Isabella equal to three over 10 which equals to, convert that into percentage, 30%. Therefore, Isabella saves the most amount of money. Question 15, work out 15% of 160 grams. So the first thing that we need to do is work out what 10% is. Now to find out what 10% is, we're gonna divide 160 by 10. So 10% is therefore 16. grams. To find out what 5% is, we're going to divide what 10% by 2. We're going to half 10%. So half of 10% is 5. 16 divided by 2 is 8 grams. Now to find out what 15% is, we're just going to add them together. So 10% plus 5% gives us 15%. 16 grams plus 8 grams is equal to 24 grams. So therefore our answer is 24 grams. Question 16. P equals 4x plus 3y, x equals 5, y equals negative 2. Work out the value of P. Okay, so we're just going to substitute in the value of x and the value of y into this equation. So P equals 4, open bracket, 5, close bracket, plus 3, open bracket, minus 2, close bracket, P equals 4 times 5, which is 20. Positive 3 times negative 2 equals minus 6. Therefore, the answer to P is equal to 14. 14 is your answer. 16B, expand 4E, open brackets, E plus 2. So the first thing we need to do, we need to multiply 4e by e. So 4e times e gives us 4e squared. Second step is to multiply 4e by 2. So 4e times 2 equals 8e. Now we're just going to add them together. So we have 4 e squared plus 8e. 16c. Solve 3 open brackets m minus 4 close brackets equals 21. So again, the first thing we need to do is expand the brackets. So I'm going to multiply 3 times m 
which is 3m, then 3 times negative 4, which is minus 12, equals 21. I'm then going to add 12 to both sides. So we have 3m equals 33. Two ways of doing this. What number do you multiply by 3 to give us 33? S11. Or you can do 33 divided by 3. Okay, so m. Oops. m is therefore going to equal to 11. Question 17. There are some chocolates in a box. One quarter of the chocolates contain nuts. The rest of the chocolates do not contain nuts. Write down the ratio of the number of chocolates that contain nuts to the number of chocolates that do not contain nuts. Give your answer in the form 1 to n. So what we know straight away from this question is that a quarter of the chocolates contain nuts. Okay, so a quarter, I'm going to convert that uh, into a decimal, so a quarter converted to a decimal is equal to 0.25. So chocolate with nuts, okay? And we, were, we know that, uh, that the rest of the chocolate does not contain nuts. So it'll be 0 0.75 chocolate with no nuts. It says give your answer in the form 1 to n. Now to do this, we need to divide both the decimals by 0 0.25. So chocolates with nuts divided uh, 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.25 is equal to 1. And 0 0.75 divided by 0 0.25 is equal to 3. Therefore, n is 3. So that's our answer. 18. A equals multiples of 5 between 14 and 26. B equals odd numbers between 14 and 26. A. List the members of A union B. So the first thing I like to do is just write out the multiples of 5 between 14 and 26. So the multiples of 5 between 14 and 26 are 15, 20, and 25. I'm then going to list the odd numbers between 14 and 26. So the odd numbers are 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, and 25. What I'm going to do now is to construct the Venn diagram, which helps me visualize the question a lot better. Okay, so this is circle A and circle B. I'm going to start off in the intersection. Okay, so the intersection is the common numbers that are multiples of 5 and odd numbers. There's only two numbers that are multiples of 5 and odd numbers. They are 15 and 25. So 15 and 25. Sorry, I need to squeeze that in here. So we have 15 and 25. Uh, so A is multiples of 5. So what we're left with is 20 on this side. And what we're left with here on B is odd numbers. So the odd numbers are 23, 
21, 19, and 17. Now we can answer the question. List the members of A union B. A union B is all the numbers in the circle. So we have 20, 15, 25, 23, 21, 19, and 17. Describe the members of A and B. Describe the members of A intersection B. So A intersection B is what's common between the multiples of 5 and the odd numbers. So, which is 15 and 25. So to describe it, we're just going to write multiples of 5 and odd numbers. and odd numbers. Uh, between, sorry. Fourteen and twenty-six. So that's our answer. Work out two one seventh plus one one quarter. So the first thing I like to do when I encounter a question like this is to convert the mixed numbers into an improper fraction. And the way we can do that is by multiplying the denominator, for example, seven by two, and then adding the numerator. So seven times two is 14, plus the one is 15. So we should have 15 as the numerator and 7 as the denominator. Plus, we're going to follow the same procedures again. 4 times 1, which is 4, plus the 1 is 5. So 5 over 4. When we add fractions, we need to find the common denominator. And the way we can find the common denominator is by multiplying the left fraction, numerator and the denominator by 4. So 15 times 4 and 7 times 4. I'm going to multiply 7 with the right hand numerator and the denominator by 7. So 5 times 7 and 4 times 7. Now I'm just going to simplify it further. So 4 times 15 is 60. 4 times 7, 28. 5 times 7, 35. Four times seven, twenty-eight. Now I can add the fractions together, so I can add the numerators together. So sixty plus thirty-five is ninety-five. The denominators remain the same, so it's going to be twenty-eight. So our final answer is ninety-five. over 28. Now when we encounter questions that involves div dividing two fractions, the first thing I like to do is change the division sign in the middle. And the way we can do that is by taking the reciprocal of the right hand side fraction. Once we've taken the reciprocal of the right hand side fraction, then we can multiply the two fractions together. So the reciprocal of the right hand side fraction is 4 over 3. Now I'm just going to convert this mixed number into improper fraction. So 5 times 1 
which is 5, plus the 1, 6. So we 6 over 5. Now I'm going to multiply across. So 6 times 4 is 24. 5 times 3 is 15. I'm going to simplify this further by dividing the numerator and the denominator by 3. So therefore we should have 8 over 5. Now I need to convert this into a mixed mix number. So how many times 5 going to 8? 1. So it'll be 1. Remainder is 3, so that goes in the numerator over 5. So that's our final answer. Question 2. In a village, the number of houses and the number of flats are in the ratio 7 to 4. The number of flats and the number of bungalows are in the ratio 8 to 5. There are 50 bungalows in the village. How many houses are there in the village? So what we have so far is houses we have flats and we have bungalows the ratio of houses to flat is 7 to 4 the ratio of flats to bungalows is 8 to 5. So what we need to do next is to make the flat part in the ratio the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top ratio by 2. So we should have 14 8 and 5. So I know 5 parts is equal to 50 bungalows. How much is 1 part? And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to divide 50 by 5. Okay, so 50 bungalows divided by 5 parts equals 10. Okay. One part is worth 10. So if one part is equal to 10, I need 14 parts. Therefore, I'm going to multiply 10 times 14 parts. This will give us the number of houses. So 10 times 14 equals 140 houses. So that's our final answer. Question 3. Renee buys 5 kilograms of sweets to sell. She pays £10 for the sweets. Renee puts all the sweets into bags. She puts 250 grams of sweets into each bag. She sells each bag of sweets for 65p. Renee sells all the bags of sweets. Work out her percentage profit. So the first thing I'm going to do is to convert 250 grams into kilograms. So 250 grams. Convert that into kilograms. So I'm going to divide it by 1,000. So therefore it's going to be 0.2. 5 kilograms. Therefore, one bag weighs 0.25 kilograms. 
So how many bags would Renee need? To find that, we need to find how many times 0.25 kilograms goes into 5 kilograms. Well, the answer is 20. So Renee has 20 bags. Renee sells each bag for 65p. So we're going to multiply 20 by 65p. I'll put the decimal place at the end. Okay. So I'm just going to multiply that out. 5 times 0, 0. 5 times 10. Sorry, 5 times 2, 10. Put the place holder here. 6 times 0, 0. 6 times 2 is 12. Now I'm just going to add them up together. And then I'm going to put the decimals in. So Renee makes 13 pounds by selling 20 bags at 65p. To find the percentage profit, we're going to be using this general equation. Okay, so new minus the old divided by old and then we're going to multiply it by a hundred okay so the new price is 13 pound the old is how much you paid for it which is 10 and we're going to divide it by 10 and then we're going to multiply it by 100 to find the percentage profit so 13 minus the 10 divided by 10 and then we're going to multiply that by 100, which will give us the percentage profit. So the percentage profit is 30%. So that's how much profit Rene will make. Question four. A cycle race across America is 3,069.25 miles in length. Juan knows his average speed for his previous races is 15.12 miles per hour. For the next race across America, he will cycle for 8 hours per day. Estimate how many days Juan will take to complete the race. So the first thing I need to do is to calculate the number of miles Juan covers in one day. So I'm going to round 15.12 miles per hour to 15 miles per hour and then multiply it by 8. So, 15 times 8, 40. So Juan covers 120 miles in one day. I'm then going to round 3,026.25 miles to 3,000 miles. This enables me to divide 3,000 miles by 120. So 120, 3,000, zero, zero. 30, so how many times does 120 go into 300? Twice. The remainder is 60. How many times does 120 go into 600? 5. So it will take Juan 25 days to complete the race. So the answer is 25 days to complete the race. Complete 
grace. So that's our answer. Juan trains for the race. The average speed he can cycle at increases. It is now 16.27 miles per hour. How does this affect your answer to part A? Well, it will decrease the number of days. So he will complete it a lot faster. So decrease the number of days to complete the race to complete the race so that's our final answer. Question 5. Here is a solid square base pyramid, V, A, B, C, D. The base of the pyramid is a square of sides 6 cm. The height of the pyramid is 4 cm. M is the midpoint of B, C and V, M equals 5 cm. Draw an accurate front elevation of the pyramid from the direction of the arrow. So the first thing we notice about this pyramid is that the base length is 6 centimeters. So therefore, I'm going to draw 6 centimeters as my base. So each of these squares is 1 centimeter. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Right. The height is 4 centimeters. So midpoint here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Going to connect them together. And I'm just going to remove that line. So that is the front elevation of the pyramid. Question 5b. Work out the total surface area of the pyramid. So the first thing that we need to do is to work out the surface area of one triangle. So this is the first triangle that we need to work out. The base of this triangle is 6 centimeters according to the measurements given to us in the question and the height is 5 centimeters so this is 5 centimeters. Now to work out the area of a triangle we need to use this general equation so area of triangle oops. It's height times base divided by 2. Now the height of this triangle is 5 centimeters. The base of this triangle is 6 centimeters. Then divide it by 2. So 5 centimeters times 6 centimeters is 30 centimeters squared. I'm going to divide that by 2, which is 15 centimeters squared. Now if you look carefully at the diagram, we have four triangles. So therefore I'm going to multiply the surface area, which is 15 centimeters squared, by 4, which will give us the total surface area of the four triangles. So 15 centimeters squared times it by 4 equals 60 centimeters squared. Now we need to find the area of the square which represents the base of the pyramid. So to find out the area of the square we're going to do height times base.
equals height times base so a rough sketch so the height is six centimeters the base is six centimeters so to find out the area we're going to do six times six six centimeters times six centimeters equals 36 centimeters squared I'm now going to add the total surface areas together so it is 60 centimeters squared plus 36 centimeters squared equals 96 centimeters squared therefore the total surface area of the pyramid is 96 centimeters squared so that's our final answer question six a pattern is made from four identical squares the sides of the squares are parallel to the axes point a has coordinates 6 7 point b has coordinates 38 and 36 point c is marked on the diagram work out the coordinates of C. So the first thing I'm going to do is to find the difference in the x-axis between point A and point B. So it's 38 minus 6 which is 32. So 38 minus 6 equals 32. So the difference between the two x points is 32. Let's squeeze that in here. 32. I'm then going to divide 32 by 4 as there's four identical squares between point A and point B. So let me just quickly illustrate this for you. So we have this goes over here, this goes over here, this goes over here, this goes over here. This goes over here. Draw a line across. This goes over here. This goes over here. This goes over here. And this goes over here. So 32 divided by 4, which gives us 8. Therefore, the length of all the sides of the square is 8. So this is 8. 8. 8, 8, we have 8 over here, 8 over here, and 8 over here. From point A, it will take us two sides of squares to reach point C on the x-axis. So we have one side here, and one side here. That is a total of 16 units on the x-axis. So therefore I'm going to add 6 plus 16 which is 22. The x-coordinate for point C is 22. So it's 6 plus 16 equals 22. Point C x coordinate equals 22. Bearing in mind the length of each side of the square is 8. From point B, the y-axis, we would therefore need to subtract two sides of the length 8. Therefore the y coordinate of point C is 20. So 
36, subtract that from 8, and then we're going to subtract it again, which gives us 20. So therefore, point C on the Y coordinate, point C, Y coordinate, equals 20. So overall, point C's coordinates are twenty two and twenty. So that's our final answer. Question twenty five on the grid below, draw the graph of y equals one minus four x for values of x from negative three to three. So the first thing I like to do when I draw a graph is to construct a table. So we have x y and I'm going to select sensible points of x, okay, so sensible values of x. So for instance, I'm going to select minus 1, 0, and 1. I'm then going to substitute in these values of x into the equation to give us the value of y. Now, when x is negative 1, negative 1 goes here inside the equation, so minus 4 times negative 1 is positive 4, add the 1, which is 5. Substitute 0, so x equals 0, so substituting 0 into the equation, so we have 1 minus 4 times 0, which is 0, so we have y is therefore equal to 1. And we have when x equals 1, substitute into the equation, so we have 1 minus 4 times 1, and therefore our answer is going to be minus 3. Now I'm just going to plot these points on the graph, so minus 1 and 5 is here, and we have 0 and 1 which is here, 1 and negative 3 which is here, and then I'm going to join the points together. So we should have, yep, so that's our graph of y equals 1 minus 4x. Question 26, a equals 5, 2, b equals negative 1, 7. Work out 2a plus b as a column vector. So what I'm going to be doing now is substituting a into this expression. So we have 2, open brackets, 5, 2, close bracket, plus, minus 1, and 7. I'm going to expand, multiply it. So 2 times 5 is 10. So you have 10. 2 times 2 is 4, okay, plus negative 1 and 7 equals 10 plus negative 1 is 9, 4 plus 7 is 11, so that's our answer.